Community College. I know, right? Are you going to the basketball game later? mentor about registering for classes. They'll help you out. You think I should get pizza or burger? Hey man, why not both? When's our next anime club meeting? Can't have too many Mav sweatshirts. No voy a la tutoría. Nos vemos luego. I'm headed to the quiet zone to study. Guess what? I got the internship. That's great. Practicing here in the sim lab will help you feel prepared when you're in the hospital with real patients. If you have any questions about class today, just send me an email. If you want to review today's class, I host office hours twice a week and I'm always available by appointment. What's the plan this weekend? Take the train to the city or stay local? I love campus this time of year. I was thinking of starting a basketball intramurals team this season. You in? Hey, I heard there's a movie night in the lounge later. Wanna check it out? Theater club meeting. Oh, we're meeting tomorrow. I heard it. Your 3D gaming projects are due in two weeks. Let me know if you'd like to review your progress. Catch the end of the men's basketball game last night? What a thriller. I know, right? That game winning three point shot was clutch. Welcome, welcome. Good evening, everyone. Would you please find your seats? We're about to start the program. Oh, yeah, that's right. Giving everybody a chance to sit down. I know the adorbs were good. Everything is good. Take your time.
Nice. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for spending your Friday evening with us. Uh, welcome to the 2023 Alumni of Distinction Awards. I'm Marcus Payne, Associate Director of Public Relations and Community Outreach, a uh, proud class of 2009 alumnus, as well as the former Alumni of Distinction honoree. I'd like to welcome you guys here to Mercy College, as well as those who are joining us virtually. Welcome. Thank you for spending your Friday with us. Thank you for being here to help us honor 10 incredibly passionate, inspiring Mercy College and College of New Rochelle alumni and to help us raise money for our student scholarships. Tonight, we honor the contributions and leadership of individuals who are examples for Mercy College students to learn from and to follow. Dr. Pamela Cole, Shannon Freeman, Philip Grant, Cynthia LaMonica, Liz Longmore, Brian Sweeney, Dr. Shango Blake, Dr. Sandy Kayo, Chris Morrison, and Pearl Sullivan. Thank you all for being here with us this evening. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce my co-host, Tara Alfano. <laughs> short. Um, welcome everyone. I'm Tara Alfano, Director of Development for College of New Rochelle Alumni. I'm also a College of New Rochelle alum, class of 2002 and 2004. We are just so glad to have you join us in this celebration tonight to recognize 10 distinguished alums. In addition to your awards, alums, we are honored to induct you into the Mercy College Alumni Hall of Fame, class of 2023. Woo! Servium and in serviendo consumere. Respectively, I will serve and to be consumed in service. Two mottos that are so intertwined and so interconnected. Tonight's award recipients are all true representations of those mottos, of what the College of New Rochelle stood for and of what Mercy College stands for. Marcus and I couldn't be prouder to be in a room of incredible individuals who make it their personal mission to serve others and to serve their communities and beyond. So a warm congratulations to all of you tonight. I also want to thank our um, gold sponsor tonight, UG2. And now, without further ado, I would like to welcome Mercy President Tim Hall to the podium to begin our program. Thank you, Tara, and thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, this is kind of a first. We haven't had many large groups over the last few years for reasons that you're fully aware of, but it's good to see you all again. Good to have everybody back here. Uh, I confess to you that it's my ninth year here in New York, and I still haven't figured out what to say instead of y'all. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, Use guys, I, I never could, could figure it out. I want to begin by recognizing uh, some of our trustees who are here. Uh, Marlene Tutera, CNR class of 1971. Marlene, where are you? There she is. Our current board chairman, Joe Gantz. Joe, where are you? Valerie Mason Cunningham, I think, is joining us uh, virtually, so welcome, Valerie. And former, former trustee Wanda Burgess from the class of 1972. There's Wanda. So colleges, including colleges who are soon to be a university, such as the case of Mercy College, they produce two kinds of light. They produce a kind of direct light, which is the way I refer to the shine that comes from the things that our current faculty and students and, and staff are doing. And it's been a good year for Mercy this year in terms of the direct light. I'll mention some of those accomplishments. But probably the most important light 
that colleges and universities produce is the reflected light, the accomplishments of their alumni. They're judged, they're evaluated, they're measured, not so much by what they do in any particular year, but what their alumni collectively do. So this is the night where we represent where we recognize that reflected light that's so important to the life of a college or a university. I'm delighted that we're able to honor these 10 individuals, remarkable alumni from Mercy College and from CNR who exemplify what it means to be a leader and to be an engaged citizen. We're so proud to call you now Mavericks, all of you. These leaders are a part of the Mercy and CNR alumni family of over 100,000 graduates. Did you hear that? 100,000 graduates once we all got together. Our alumni are continually engaged with the college. They come to speak to our students. They support the activities of the campus. They provide internship opportunities that are invaluable to the future careers of our students. I'm proud that nine alumni sit on the college's board of trustees and hundreds of alumni are employed at Mercy College to this day. They contribute to the richness of the college by having shared experiences with our current students and prospective students. Our alumni understand and value the opportunities offered to them when they were here at, at Mercy College or when they were at CNR. And so we're helping to make those same opportunities available to current and future students partially tonight by making available scholarship opportunities for the children of alumni, either by supporting the Mercy College Endowed Alumni Legacy Scholarship Fund, that is a mouthful, or the CNR Legacy Scholarship Fund. For many students, especially Mercy students, college would not be possible without scholarship support. And so we thank you and we value immensely. And on behalf of our students, we praise you for your generosity in, in helping them to make a difference in their lives. So I talked to you a little bit about direct light and that's the light that comes from what our students are doing today, what our faculty and staff and other members of the Mercy community are doing today. And it's been a good year for Mercy College. It's, we're especially pleased to become the first college, the first private college in the country and the only private New York college to be awarded the seal of excellencia by an important group that advocates for the higher education opportunities of Hispanic students. And now today, more than 40% of our students are Hispanic and they are flourishing here at Mercy. And Mercy is being recognized for taking deliberate steps, not just to admit them, but to make sure that we're creating the conditions to allow them to succeed, especially succeed by graduating. We'll be having a, a large celebration in New York later this spring to recognize Mercy College and uh, Albany University. I always have trouble with that one. Uh, who are the two New York institutions who've been recognized by Excellencia. This is the year that we decided that Education is too important just to keep being done exactly the same way as it was always done. One of the things that we discovered during COVID is when you ask people what kind of education they were looking for, about 60% of them did not say, I'm looking for a bachelor's or a master's or uh, an associate's degree. About 60% of them were looking for something shorter, something uh, more intensely practical. And so I'm happy to tell you that Mercy this past year has begun a new division, a division that's geared towards trying to educate people immediately for jobs that they can have tomorrow or the next day. We call it Certify, and Mercy is proud to be allowing people to acquire the skills that they need. So we've partnered with 16 providers to begin already 100 courses, and that number I think will grow, that's just the first year, to try to help supplement the needs that people have for education, which they can't always afford to take four years off to get. 
The men's lacrosse team has been another light this year. So this is kind of hard to understand. I've not been at many universities where there were athletic teams who competed at the national level in a national championship. Our men's lacrosse team is the first one at Mercy College to participate in the championship finals. Uh, they didn't win, unfortunately, but they know their way there now, and I'm pretty sure that's going to make a difference to the future. So they're, they're bringing light to the college. As my tenure as president of Mercy College, a great institution of higher learning, winds down, I'm deeply grateful for the support that you and other alums of Mercy College and of CNR have shown to this institution as we've come together to try to go forward together. Your generosity and commitment to Mercy will have a legacy for years to come. I'll say it this way, it will last and be meaningful to students farther than we can see. We can't even see how far it will go, but that's, that's what's happening because of your generosity. So thank you again, all of you, for being here tonight, and let's have a good time. Thank you so much, President Hall. Everybody give President Hall another round of applause. Thank you so much for all that you've done for the college, President Hall. We appreciate you. Now we would like to take a moment to introduce you to someone who is distinguishing herself even before she gets a degree. My name is Adriana Flores. Um, I'm class of 2025 and I'm a history education major. It was my senior year of high school. I toured the campus and I remember entering the library and the first thing I see is the Hudson River and it was just so beautiful and you see the field and every so often my friends and I actually see the sunset together and it's just beautiful and calming. Poverty was always in our life and I always wanted to fight that. And I have a younger sister, so I wanted her to know there's more than our little town. Um, you can go beyond that. I'm the first child in my family to go to college, so every time my mom is with anyone, she's like, oh, my daughter goes to college, because she's never been able to say that with any of my other siblings. She wasn't allowed to get an education when she was my age, so for her daughter to go beyond high school, not only just getting her high school diploma, I'm getting my bachelor's, so she's very excited. I love all my professors, especially my honors. It's very close-knit. I think max I've ever had in my class is 10 people, and that allows a connection with your professor. I'm not just a number on a roster. You get to know one another on a personal level. This campus, it's such a diverse set of students and professors, so you get to see a mixed and diverse set of people and new ways of thinking. I'm trying to get every aspect of Mercy and like help around because since Mercy has given me a full tuition ride, I want to give back to the community. I'm actually student government DOPS chair executive. I'm in the honors program where I'm the honors advisory board member. I am president of Lead for Mercy. We think of field trips, um, even classes, and concerns that um, students are having and being like mentors. There's so many resources and opportunities you can get and just contacting people and having those connections will allow you benefits overall. I'm a Hispanic college student who's already come a long way and who hopes to inspire others like me, like my younger sister, for example, on the path forward. Thank you. That is a great story of success here at Mercy College. It is now my pleasure to introduce our first three honorees, Mercy alumni Pamela Cole, Philip Grant, and Liz Longmore. Dr. Pamela Cole has spent her career dedicated to clinical and developmental child psychology, devoting her life to ensuring better emotional health for children. Pamela graduated from Mercy College in 1972 with a bachelor's degree in psychology. Over the course of her more than 45-year career, Pamela remains a beloved faculty member at Penn State University and is currently leading five research projects. 
She has held numerous academic leadership roles at Penn State, was a Fulbright scholar in the 90s studying the emotional development of Nepalese children, and has authored or co-authored over 90 publications. Among several honors during her time as faculty member, she has received the Faculty Scholar Medal at Penn State and Fellow status in the American Psychological Association. That is amazing, amazing work. Pamela, would you please join me at the podium to come receive your award? Come on up here. Come on up. Let's keep the claps going. Welcome. Come on up here. Hey, this is really wonderful. So hi, brothers and sisters. Some of my own class right here. Um, I'm really uh, was amazed and, and truly humbled by uh, being recognized um, by a Mercy College Alumna Distinction Award, um, and especially humbled to be among this group of honorees. You know, I'm grateful to Mercy College for this honor, and uh, also to my college compadres, Ginny Damso, Mary Carol Barron, <laughs> Patrice Cuddy for the nomination. Um, we all met the fir very first day of college in the tea room. <laughs> and that'll tell you about what life was like back then. Um, and we've been friends ever since. Um, the years 1968 to 1972 were our college years. And they were a time of social turmoil. Uh, voices were raised against socially progressive facts and many were leaving. And we didn't know it at the time, but it seemed that the conservatism at the college leadership was creating the unhappiness for those professors. Um, and even though we didn't understand all of that, we understood that the best teachers were leaving us. And most of the student body and the student government, of which I was a part, um, spent most of my third year in protest of what was going on. Not that we really understood what was going on, but we protested anyway. <laughs> So Mercy launched my career as a psychologist for sure, but what I'm especially grateful for is the life lesson that it gave me. And, and that lesson is that no matter how small you feel your voice is, raise it. Raise it when you see things are wrong, even if you don't fully understand the background. It, it's, to me, it's wonderful to see that Mercy College survived those first tenuous years. They were tenuous. That it's, it's amazing to see that Mercy has thrived in winning this award. I was the one who started the applause there. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I think like it's so fantastic, you know, what Mercy has become. So it survived that time um, and thrived and has become a wonderful community supporting the leaders of tomorrow, as we can see among my fellow honorees. So I'm humbled. Thank you for the honor. Philip Grant is the Chief Executive Officer of the Hunts Point Produce Market. Philip leads a team of approximately 110 staff members who support the day-to-day -day operations of the largest wholesale produce market in the nation. He received his MBA from Mercy College in 2008. The market is composed of nearly 30 different merchants and is essential to the food infrastructure serving the New York City region. The market partners with local food rescue and food service organizations to donate surplus produce. For the last two years, Hunts Point Market has partnered with Mercy's Maverick Market Food and Resource Pantry to provide fresh produce to Mercy's community. Previously, Philip held a senior role at the New York City Economic Development Corporation. That's right. Please join me in welcoming my man Philip Grant to the stage to receive his Award, come on, Phil, come on up here. My guy. Just donated food to Mercy College, to our pantry, to our Mav Market. My guy, good man, thank you, sir. Thank you, 
so much. Thank you so much. Greetings. This is, you know, something is, is so beautiful, this energy here. I think the last time I was in this room was right before graduation in 2008. Thank you, Mercy, for acknowledging my work and service. I'm grateful for the role that Mercy played in my personal professional growth. My Mercy education helped to catapult me in my current role. I learned from my experience my, from, from professors who were trailblazers. I received support in the classroom that led to accomplishments beyond these walls and beyond the gates of mercy. Mercy taught me the importance of giving back, and that's become a core value to me at the Hunts Point Produce Market. As the CEO of the Hunts Point Produce Market, I'm responsible for ensuring that 22 million people have access to fresh produce around the, around the, around the region. I oversee a market that employs over 2,000 people, most of whom live right there in the Bronx. 2.5 billion pounds of produce pass through our market every year. Hans Point Produce Market is integral to the nation's food infrastructure and food security. I'm proud to share that the market donates over 15 million pounds of food every year. Being able to care for and contribute to the community is one of the favorite parts of my job. That's what keeps me going every day. The, the empathy that guides my leadership was nurtured right here at Mercy, right here. I learned that business leaders couldn't just be beholden to balance sheets. You have to really, really care. And that's what, as I said, keeps me going. We must always consider the greater good for our employees, for our consumers, and for our communities. My experience at Mercy prepared me for the challenges of tackling food insecurity. I feel that if we could give people an opportunity and just show them how, fish, how to fish, and then they could feed their families going forward. And that's some of the things that I'm doing right there at the market. We're embarking on revitalizing that market. It's been there for over 55 years right in the Bronx and over 200 years in the city. And if we could bring another thousand new jobs down into the Bronx, that's a thousand more opportunities. That's a thousand new jobs that's going to support other industries uh, that would bring up to about 10,000 direct and indirect jobs. That is why we do it. We currently support 10,000 jobs there, and we're looking to bring another 10,000 jobs when we revitalize. That's what keeps us going. That's what I learned through Mercy. Every single day at the market, I use and leverage what I've learned at uh, Mercy College. I'm so proud that I have my wife here with me. And the last time we actually were out together was uh, in 2008 at the... <laughs> no. <laughs> See, I'm working, real, I'm working real hard at the market. But uh, we were out at the, uh, the uh, Westchester County Center. Uh, when we, you know, um, uh, when I graduated and walked, it was, a, it, was, it was such a proud moment. You know, I may be the CEO out at the market, but my wife really sets a strategy there, you know. Uh, you know, it's really almost going to bring tears to my eyes, but, you know, behind every great person and man, there's a, a great woman. And, right? You know? Yeah? You know? And I think, I, I think about... You know, uh, and, and since I'm getting the moment, this is uh, new for me, and I'm, I'm going off script. Since I'm getting the moment to talk, I'm going to talk from the heart. You know, uh, when I think about uh, why I do it as well, I think about my mom and my grandma. You know, uh, Audrey and Lucille, uh, Lucille Davis, Audrey Grant. And I think about my, my wife here, Karen the Mantle. And my, and my mom, actually, my wife never got to meet my mom. And, uh, and she's really been a partner, and I see how she takes care of our family, and I'm really proud of that. So, thank you, and uh, thank you for holding us down. You know, and I say, that, that's all what we learned here at Mercy. It's really about caring about folks, and, and if we could really put it back into the community, that's what we should be doing. Uh, I am 
I would like to say congratulations to my fellow honorees. We share a special connection to Mercy, the, the institution that educated us, nurtured us, and transformed us. And Dr. Blake said it. We, we made it to the Hall of Fame, Dr. Blake. So <laughs> thank you. And thank you. And thank you to Marquez. If it wasn't for Marquez and Scorpio Rogers, I wouldn't be here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I must say one more, and Professor Pirelli, if you're still around, one of the best professors here. Uh, I, you know, I, I haven't seen him in a couple of years, but it really is one of the reasons why I'm here as well. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Liz Longmore is Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for Stamford Health. With more than 25 years of healthcare expertise, Liz began her career in nursing, where she worked in women's healthcare and expanded her professional experience to emergency services and critical care. As her career developed, she held roles in clinical, educational, and operational leadership. Prior to her current role, Liz spearheaded all clinical aspects of the design, construction, and operationalization of the new Stamford Hospital, which opened its doors in September of 2016. Liz graduated from Mercy College in 2009 with her bachelor's degree in nursing. And in 2011, she earned her master's degree in nursing administration. Uh, Liz could not be here this evening to accept her award, but I'd like to invite her mother, uh, Mercy alumni Emily Saunders, to come up here. She's one of the originators. One of the originators. Good evening, everyone. I would like to tell everybody that I was in the first graduating class of Mercy College. I would also like to acknowledge my two friends, Louise Squitiri, Marguerite Maliterno, who also were in the first graduating class. When my daughter told me she wanted to get her bachelor's degree, I said, why don't you go to Mercy? She said, Mercy? Mom, you went there it's so long ago. <laughs> well, she did go there, and she did get her master's degree, and we, we are, Louise, Marguerite, myself, eternally grateful for the education we got particularly as the first class, and we were told to woman up and to take over, and we did. <laughs> Louise has a doctorate. Marguerite went all the way up in elementary ed, and I became a principal, which was incredibly unusual for people who graduated in 1965, because we were young girls then, but old ladies now. But my daughter followed in the same direction and is eternally grateful to Mercy for what she became, the COO of Stanford Medical Group. And the entire board said she was the most qualified person Thank you, Mercy College. Thank you, Mercy College. Thank you, Mercy College. Thank you so much. Um, Liz sent some remarks via video. Good evening, everyone. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for this esteemed honor. I got my start at Mercy College from an administrative standpoint. I had worked with the majority of my career as a clinical nurse and came into the administrative nursing program at Mercy. I have a long legacy with Mercy College. My mother was one of the first graduates and that propelled her career forward much in the same way that it propelled mine. At Mercy, I had a wonderful education and wonderful professors who really helped me to understand what the opportunities were outside of bedside nursing. Again, I wanna take this opportunity to thank all of you for this wonderful honor.
That's right. Next up, <clears throat> have you ever seen the Mercy Step Team prestigious divas? Well, take a look. They're incredible. Prestigious Divas is an organization that we have here on campus. We have three different teams. We have our dance team, our step team, and our newly founded cheer team, which I am the manager of. Prestigious Divas is just a great organization on, on campus for students to join and meet new people, have fun, and like let go of their creative side. We really promote student activity. We want students to feel comfortable, be happy about where they're going to school, allow them to understand the opportunities that are provided to them at the school, whether it's a club, um, even, even if it's not prestigious divas. We have other clubs at the school that people, if they enjoy the arts or they just enjoy being part of a family, then they can definitely join the clubs that are shown here. A few of my students happen to be performing, and like any good professor, I wanted to come and support in their extracurricular endeavors and activities. I joined Groove 5 Groove to, you know, to be some part of something bigger and I wanted to leave a positive imprint on this world before I leave it and it's just nothing more fulfilling than being a member of this organization. Community and connection, I think those two things make community life and campus life all worthwhile for Mercy College. We're giving our toy drive to United Way and we decided to start that last year just a way for us to give back to the community and allow those that are supporting us to also contribute to us giving back as well. There's certainly no shortage of talent at Mercy. It is now my pleasure to introduce our College of New Rochelle honorees, Dr. Shango Blake, Dr. Sandy Kao, Chris Morrison, and Pearl Sullivan. Nationally known as the Hip Hop Principal, Dr. Shango Blake is the founder and CEO of True SK Consultants and Executive Director of NYC Speaks. As a New York City principal, Shango saw a profound need to institute drastic and creative changes to improve his school's failing health. He initiated a bold and daring self-created project to integrate a conceptualized hip-hop-based educational program. He is a triple alumnus from the College of New Rochelle, graduating with his bachelor's degree in 1993 and then earning master's degrees in guidance and counseling in 1996 and in Communication Arts and Studies in 2011. Dr. Blake, come on up. so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Felt a lot of pressure there. I want to thank you um, to President Hall, the Board of Trustees, to Marcus and Tara. I want to thank you on behalf of the College of New Rochelle. Um, when we needed a home, Mercy College was that home. And so I'm so excited to now be part of the Mercy college family, but I'm just very, I just feel honored that you took the time to provide a home for a school that provided so many great memories. I remember coming into, and it's funny, we're talking about all these great things, but I remember the younger me, and when I was a young man, I was a kind of student that when I came to school, teachers was like, oh God, here he comes. <laughs> Because I was curious. I just was curious. It wasn't bad, just getting into things that young men get into who are curious. Um, and um, 
When I entered into the College of New Rochelle, it was in Harlem's Rosa Parks campus. It was the College of New Rochelle School of New Resources. Um, and I remember taking courses like experience, learning, and identity, and designing the future, and all these courses that made you think about like social justice issues. And I was a young person, you know, dealing with these classes, and simultaneously, I had gotten a job in Harlem working at an after school program called Reeland Center for Children and Families, which would later go on to be known as the Harlem Children's Zone, uh, ran by Jeffrey Cannon. I was one of his first staffers. And I remember looking at those young people in that after school program, and that's where I was telling your daughter, Marcus, that's where I found my passion. That's where I found my love. I knew that I loved working with young people because they reminded me of me. And um, the rest is history. And so here I am now. I'm a, I'm a Hall of Famer. I mean, I thought that was only for baseball players and <laughs> entertainers. So I, got, I, got a, I got a plaque and everything. I can I go home. It's, it's, my wife couldn't be here today. She's not feeling well. But I, you know, you're married to a Hall of Famer now, baby. <laughs> But I want to say this and use this opportunity uh, for the fact that I do have this platform to talk about young people who are often misunderstood, um, neglected, and written off, that are given pejorative terms as at risk and underserved. I want you to understand that these young people that we call at risk, they're not at risk. They're underestimating. And when we change the language, and we change the attitude, then we will change the approach. And I'll leave you with an African proverb since this is Black History Month. And it, and it goes like this. A neglected child will burn down the village just to feel its warmth. Thank you. Dr. Sandy Kao is a board-certified family nurse practitioner who cares for patients across the care continuum, from pediatric to geriatric, specializing in primary care and urgent care services. Her other specialties include oncology, school-based health, and women's health. Sandy started her career as a clinical nurse at Yale New Haven Hospital in 2008. She has owned and operated her own telemedicine practice and enjoys providing holistic modalities of care and wellness for her patients. As an assistant professor at Yale, Sandy specializes in curricular course design innovation and transition to practice. Sandy is an advocate for global health and travels to Haiti, Nigeria, and Ghana annually to conduct health fairs and instruct courses in nursing education. She graduated from the College of New Rochelle School of Nursing in 2008. Sandy, will you please come to the podium? Thank you so much. I um, am so grateful to be here tonight. I'm grateful to God to, um, who has been able to combine my passion and my purpose. Um, I'm grateful to my family who's here, my husband, Camille, my children, Jeremiah, Josephine, Jasmine, Teresa, and my mother-in-law, <laughs> Josephine. Um, so my parents immigrated uh, from Haiti in the 80s. My mom was a CNA, my dad was a cab driver, and English um, was not my first language. I started speaking English like in first or second grade because they didn't speak English even though I was born here. Um, I grew up in inner city Bridgeport, and uh, in 2004, I made a decision to come to the College of New Rochelle. And one of the reasons, uh, or two reasons why I made the decisions, one of them was the financial aid, and the other one was because they were giving me a free laptop. <laughs> okay, 
uh, they were giving me a free laptop. So at the time, I probably am still paying off that laptop right now. But um, <laughs> that was a deal breaker for me. I'm like, I'm going to go to CNR because they're giving out free laptops, and that's, that's really cool. Um, but CNR was such an incredible experience. Uh, wisdom for life was our motto. I met my husband there my sophomore year when I was 19, and we've been together ever since. Um, and it just was an incredible opportunity. Nursing is a real passion of mine. Being able to combine what I love um, and just being able to teach and give back is so important to me. Um, I'm grateful for the scholarships that I received while I was at, while I was at CNR, and I'm definitely committed to giving back, um, in particular supporting the underserved, underrepresented individuals in healthcare. So again, thank you so much, Mercy College and CNR for this honor and award. Thank you. Chris Morrison graduated from the College of New Rochelle in 1972 with a bachelor's degree in sociology. Her impressive career included positions as a research scientist for the New York State Department of Drug Abuse Services, assistant district attorney in the office of the Bronx District Attorney, operating her own general law practice, and assistant attorney general for the New York State Office of the Attorney General. Passionate about volunteerism, Chris is no stranger to giving back and making a difference, serving on the board of organizations focused on immigrant communities and improving New York City public schools. She has also served on the board of the CNR Alumni Association and is currently a member of the CNR Legacy Council at Mercy College. Chris, will you join us on the podium? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Mercy College and especially President Hall for including CNR alumni in the Alumni of Distinction Awards. And also for all of the support that Mercy College has provided to CNR alumni. I experienced that a lot um, this past June because it was my 50th um, anniversary of my graduation. And it was wonderful at Mercy College. And it, all of our, you know, my classmates and myself, you know, had a wonderful, wonderful time. I am very humbled and honored to receive this award. And I would like to extend uh, my congratulations to all of the other recipients uh, tonight. Uh, they have made significant contributions to make this a better world. Um, attending the College of New Rochelle was one of the best decisions that I ever made because of the education that I received, the values that were instilled in me, and the lifelong friendships that I made. It provided a very dynamic environment that um, encouraged us to think critically, to pursue our passions and our dreams, and to become strong and independent women. That enabled me to pursue a graduate degree and then eventually a law degree. And my professional career as an attorney in government uh, was very satisfying. Uh, I've always tried to use my adv advocacy skills in the not-for-profit work that I've done for various organizations. And in fact, that work has given me as much fulfillment as my work as an attorney. There have been a lot of connections to CNR throughout my life, but just to give you one example of one of the organizations that I've been involved with for many years, it's the Maura Clark Edith Ford Center in Bushwick, Brooklyn, 
which um, if any of you remember, was named after two of the four women who were murdered in El Salvador in 1980. There were four women religious who were doing work in El Salvador. The center was established to provide educational services and job training to a mainly immigrant population in Bushwick in 1993, and um, one of the co-directors was Sister Mary Dowd, class of 1949 of the College of New Rochelle. So when they wanted to expand their board of directors, Sister Mary called my classmate, Eileen Nedzwicki, who at the time was the director of alumni relations. And Eileen said, I have just the person for you in Brooklyn, <laughs> my classmate. So Sister Mary called me, and I visited the center. And the moment I visited the center, I was all in. And I've been involved with it ever since. The Ursulines adopted the motto, Servium, I will serve when they established the college. And that motto really is applicable to all facets of our lives. Family, friends, work, faith, community. And I have been very blessed in all of those aspects, all of those facets of my life. And so I feel that I am obligated to serve others, particularly those that are less fortunate. And I have found that giving opportunities and hope to others has brought me great joy. Thank you very much for this honor. Sullivan spent more than 14 years as a New York City police officer until she retired due to injury. Soon after, she enrolled in the College of New Rochelle's School of New Resources, which offered a bachelor's degree program specifically for adults. As part of her dedication to service, Pearl worked with CNR's Co-op City campus directors to create a program called Students of Victory that offered monthly prayer services for students. After graduating in 2003 from CNR with a bachelor's degree in psychology, she went on to earn a master's in public administration from CNR in 2015. She returned to CNR and spent 12 years as the coordinator of retention systems, helping to connect adult students with resources such as tutoring, childcare, and books. After being ordained by the Miracle World Outreach Ministries in 2011, she decided to join the ministry full-time in 2017. Currently, she works as a minister administrator at Miracle Workshop Center in the Bronx, which provides food, back-to-school supplies, and clothing to the local community. Pearl continues to commit to serving the College of New Rochelle alumni as a member of the CNR Legacy Council at Mercy College. Carl, will you please come to the podium? First, I'd like to thank God for saving my life and giving me a life. I thank him for giving us the Ursuline nuns who saw the suffering and deprivation in the late 1800s to create the College of New Rochelle, first the College of St. Angela, named after Angela Marici. They knew that women needed an opportunity to take care of their families if something happened. The if something happens 
happens a lot in life. I'm grateful for the Sisters of Mercy that decided in the 1950s to give more people the opportunity to get an education. The if something happens in life happened at the College of New Rochelle while I was there as an employee. But the motto of Servion was forged in my heart the minute I walked in the doors. The Co-op City campus used to be a key food supermarket in Co-op City. I knew it as a police officer because there were these trailers by the side of the New England Thruway that said the College of New Rochelle with the emblem on it. And I couldn't believe that that was a real college. That's got to be some rinky-dink Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and I drove by it when I was on patrol in the 45th Precinct, only to come back in 1999, 1998 actually, to get my degrees, start my degrees. I walked in and I heard God whisper, home. It wasn't quite what I expected a college to look like at the time. They had a few deficiencies and some things were missing. But I said, you know what, we're going to make this work. You set me here, I'm going to roll up my sleeves because that's what I do. And I want to be helpful. Dr. Blake mentioned experience, learning, and identity, where we have to actually go through our luggage of life and unpack it, compartmentalize it, take the good, put the bad in the garbage bag, and don't go down to the dump to find it again. What I'm grateful for are the people that were in the background. Some of them are here, Marlene Tutera, and Rosa Napoleon, my buddies, my partners in legacy crime, so to speak. We had our foot in the door. From the time I was a student, I got pushed into the Senate, the Alumni Association, and the activities behind the scenes of the College of New Rochelle. I sat on the board of the Ursuline Institute, which made sure that the Ursuline tradition would continue on even after the nuns were no longer there and they became a little bit more expansive in their philosophy of teaching. Staying there and working there was one of the greatest experiences of my life next to having my children. My son and his wife couldn't be here tonight, but my daughter and her husband are here and she's a graduate of the class of 2016 out of the School of New Resources also. Tonight I heard a lot of stories, a stories of honor, of justice, of mercy, but most of all of love. Our love of humanity and our willing to continue to serve one another no matter what. I have to thank President Hall and former President Latimer for having the guts to say, we can make this work. There's something good here, and we want to help you preserve it. I'm grateful that the legacy is going to continue, and it overwhelms me that I get to be one of the first. When you hear somebody tell your story, you can't imagine that it's you. You can't imagine that you have been that blessed to be a part of so much greatness in the world, and that I'm just getting started. <laughs> Working in ministry is now the rest of my life. My kids know that. They do anything and everything to help mommy do whatever it is that mommy's got to get done. They got the Godmobile up and running because it, it, was, it wasn't running, but they, they got it running today, and we're, and we're here today. So I'm very grateful that. To my fellow honorees, we got a big legacy. We've got a lot of things that we have left undone and let us continue to forge forward and not forget what these institutions have put inside of us and the skill sets that they gave us to make a difference. Don't ever think that you don't matter. 
each and every one of you, even in taking care of your mom and your dad or your kids at home, is a big responsibility. Don't take it lightly because you held the future of this country in your hands. To the educators, to the, to the medical profession, I thank you all for continuing to serve. To our lawyers, you know what you all have to do. Mercy and justice, we know that already. To everyone else, just share that love. And I thank you again for this prestigious award. That's right, let's give it up one more time for Minister Pearl Sullivan. That's right, real hugs. I like that, Noel. Before we move on to the important scholarship challenge, I would like to take a moment to recognize uh, members of the Mercy Alumni Advisory Council and the CNR Legacy Council who are in the room. Would you please stand up so that we can recognize and applaud you for the hard work that you do to make this better. That's right, coach, stand up, coach, don't fight it. That's right. Okay, so one of the reasons we're here tonight is to raise money for those very important scholarships. So that leads me to the next, next very important part of our evening. I'm going to ask all of you if you could just dig a little deeper and give or pledge just a little bit more to support our student scholarships. And this is how it's going to work. Uh, Marcus is going to demonstrate. Do you have a cell phone? You, you can take out your cell phone and you can text your donation. Text it to Mercy Alum to 41444. Or if you prefer to make a gift online, you can do so by going to mercy.edu forward slash alum awards. Or if you want, there are pledge cards on your table tonight. You can fill out one of those cards, hold it up in the air, and someone will come around and pick that up from you. That's right. So while you're making your do donation, please keep in mind that about $10,000 equals one semester of tuition for a full-time undergraduate student, and about $750 equals one semester worth of textbooks for a full-time undergraduate student. Remember, 100% of your contributions will go towards student scholarship, which is why we're asking for 100% of you to make a gift tonight. No amount is too big, no amount is too small, and every dollar makes a difference. So thank you all for your support. You can continue to make a donation throughout the evening at any point, and please let one of our staff know, and they will be happy to help you. I literally have somebody on the computer. They're doing it. All you got to do is raise your hand. We have you. I'm giving everybody a chance to go on their phones. Y'all got it? All right. Oh, bring the website back up. All right, we could do that. And you want the text back, no problem. <laughs> we can do it. That's right. We love that interaction. This is a two-way communication thing we got here. 4144. Four, four. Oh, yeah, it's another four. There you go. You got it. I, that was a test to make sure that we're all participating. You guys are scholars. I appreciate y'all. All right, it's working. Great. It's going good. <laughs> so while that is going on and everybody is getting that going, I see you guys. You guys are doing great in here. Um, it is now my pleasure to introduce our final three Mercy honorees, uh, Shannon Freeman, Cynthia LaMonica, and Brian Sweeney. Shannon Freeman graduated from Mercy College's Media Studies program with a concentration in film and culture in 2014. Shannon has spent the last eight years as a television director for CBS News streaming channel. While a student at Mercy, she interned with News 12 Westchester and was hired after graduation. Shannon serves as a mentor to students of the Reels Works program, where she assists in storyboarding films and editing short documentaries to be shown at film festivals around the New York City area. Shannon, will you please join me up here on this podium 
so that we could celebrate you like you so rightfully deserve. good company this evening let me just say like being the young one this has been so inspiring um, hearing everyone's stories this evening I'm doing enough but I'm not doing enough like this has been really good so like they said um, I graduated Mercy College well I came to Mercy College in 2012 as a transfer student um, the media studies department Lou Grasso thank you Lou He's got me here today. Um, they helped me land an internship with News 12 Westchester. I was there for two years. I learned the ins and outs of television newsmaking. Um, it was difficult, but it was challenging, and I made it through. Um, once I graduated Mercy College in 2014, I became a full-time director for CBS News, um, their streaming department and things like that on your Roku and Apple TV, um, which I was an integral part of launching then. Um, I've had the opportunity to direct major breaking news, foreign and domestic, and election night coverage. Um, some of the classes I took here at Mercy have helped me prepare and build the confidence for the, some real world challenges. Uh, some of the classes were gender and film studies, a French course, and my favorite course that I still think about today is script writing. Uh, it gave me the freedom to be creative, get my thoughts down on paper, and force me to share my thoughts with others. Um, I would just say here that being in news, as we all know, news is, it's been a lot in the last few years, and it's been challenge, challenging, and I'm behind the scenes, but oftentimes I'm the only woman behind the scenes and the only woman of color, and it's been a lot, but it's been so rewarding. And I feel like the short amount of time that I was at Mercy has truly prepared me for that. I walk in a room and sometimes I'm the only person of color there, but I... Truly, um, I'm thankful for my time at Mercy. One thing I do regret is I didn't come here sooner. Um, hearing everyone's stories and the memories that they have and their friends that they've met and their contribution, it just makes me want to be a better person. It makes me want to do more. So this has been, this has been a great honor. So thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Cynthia Borges La Monica enrolled at Mercy College in 1964, at a time when the world and higher education were rapidly changing. Cynthia attended Mercy College on scholarship and graduated with a bachelor's degree in biology in 1969. Influenced by the social values taught by the Sisters of Mercy, she became a caseworker for the city of Mount Vernon, New York. In the 1980s, she created the first New Jersey licensed social service agency, at that time known as Home Studies, Inc., devoted to international adoptions. She was a social worker for the Mount Vernon City School District for 18 years. In her retirement, Cynthia has become an active volunteer with a variety of organizations, including her church and Open Table, an outreach program assisting youths aging out of foster care. Right. Now, I would, be, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this awesome fact that August Mac marks 53 years that Peter and Cynthia were married, and they got married in this very rotunda 53 years ago. This is mercy. This is beautiful. Yeah, I'm that old. <laughs> Figure it out. Been around a long time. Okay. Um, first, I want to say how humbled and honored I am to receive this award and how grateful I am to my sister Wanda Borges for having nominated me. And I have to say happy anniversary to my husband in 53 years. <laughs> I cannot believe that it's been 53 years since we actually got married here. 
and Dr. John Rayburn, I don't know if any of you remember him, he played the uh, wedding march from, uh, what was the name of the, the Sound of Music, as my husband and I walked forward. So there's a lot of memories here, a lot of memories here. I am so impressed with the caliber of the people. I feel humbled in relationship to the other people that have been nominated and the recipients of this award. And I just want to say thank you, thank you so much to Mercy College. I have so much to say, but I'm not going to say here. This is double spaced, so don't worry about it. <laughs> the faculty and the staff of Mercy College were so influential in my life. It all started all, when I was a little kid, even, because I had the Sisters of Mercy in the Bronx. Yay! Bronx, New York. Right. Yes. Woohoo! Right. Okay. So, I had the Sisters of Mercy from first grade all the way up to college. Yay! Yay. <laughs> okay. And walking through these halls of Mercy College has brought back so many memories to me. Armed with a newly minted BA from Mercy College, I decided that I would try teaching. So I taught up here in Transfiguration for six months as a substitute teacher. But I have to tell you, I was so concerned about my, stat, my, my children, eighth graders, that I really got involved with their lives. As I was working, this is when I was very young, and you could work two jobs at a time, I was working here at Transfiguration part-time, and then I was going over to an institution called St. Dominic's Home for Children in the Bronx, and I was working there too. And then I also worked in the Summer in the City program. For some of you that are my age, you will remember that that was the program in Harlem where I was teaching science. So I began to realize that I wasn't a very good teacher but I could be a great social worker. After I decided to become a social worker, I worked for the city of Mount Vernon, and then I did a short stint of about eight years working with, in drug rehabilitation. I then got my master's in, in social work after all that, and another master's in educational administration. At that time, my husband and I were trying to have children, and we found out that we were going to run into a little bit of difficulty. So we started the process of adopting, and we adopted both of our children from Bogota, Colombia, in South America. That's when I really got involved with adoption, because I didn't realize how many people really were looking to adopt. And so, my friend and I, Marie Shikaitis, some of you may know her, she recently passed away. We founded the first adoption agency in New Jersey in 25 years, specializing in international adoption. So I stayed there for five years, and I raised my children. After that, I worked for the city of Mount Vernon as a school social worker and I stayed there for 18 years. Now that I'm retired, I'm involved with my church and in so many activities at my church that I wonder if I'm really retired. But mostly I feel so indebted to Mercy College and the Sisters of Mercy, also the non-religious staff, the Jesuits, while the Mercy Sisters taught me my religion, the Jesuits taught me how to think. Maybe not all the Catholics will agree with that, but <laughs> it's the truth. I remember Dr. John Rayburn, the director of the music department, Sister Ann Grow, who is now not Sister Ann Grow, Eileen McMahon, and Dr. William Pratella, all who were powerful influences in my life. So I thank you, Alumna Board of Trustees, faculty, Mercy College friends, family, and especially my sister Wanda, who nominated me for this award. 
I am deeply honored to be in such prestigious and accomplished company. Thank you so much. Brian Sweeney accomplished what few college athletes can. He translated a successful college athletic career into a successful professional career. Brian played baseball at Mercy College from 1993 to 1996. Brian Sweeney accomplished what few college athletes can. He translated a successful college athletic career into a successful professional career. Brian played baseball at Mercy College from 1993 to 1996. And in 1996, he was signed by Major League Baseball's Seattle Mariners and took a break from his education. He later returned to Mercy and graduated in 2007 with a bachelor's degree in biology. While at Mercy, Brian was named All-State and the New York Collegiate Athletic Conference Scholar Athlete of the Year in 1995, becoming Mercy's all-time leader in complete games and strikeouts. Over 18 seasons playing professional baseball, Brian amassed 128 victories. At the conclusion of his playing career, Brian was called to coaching professional baseball. He is currently the pitching coach for the Kansas City Royals. Brian could not be here this evening, but I would like to invite his father, Edward Sweeney, uh, to come up here and receive this award on his behalf. Ed Sweeney, everybody. A little bit of a surprise to me that I was to accept this award for Brian. But um, I just, I am honored to accept this award for Brian and I thank Mercy College really from the bottom of my heart. And a little shout out has to go to Sully, the, his, his pitching coach from years ago. <laughs> that, that, that got this all started. Um, uh, just, just a couple of quick things. Uh, I, I have, uh, uh, I've been fortunate to follow Brian around the country in uh, playing for the different teams that he, that he was, uh, I was uh, invited to Japan in two different times. The 24-hour uh, trip wasn't too bad, but uh, <laughs> they treated us well over there. And uh, you had to see Brian and his children being accepted in Japan. It was really something else. Um, just one, uh, one quick thing. Um, I have been a Yankee fan. <laughs> for over 75 years. <laughs> and when uh, Brian would come in and uh, uh, play against the other teams, I would have to sit on my hands <laughs> when the Yankees did something good. <laughs> but there was one day that I am extremely proud of. He came in in relief in Yankee Stadium pitch with Seattle and pitching against, the, uh, pitch pitching against Seattle. And uh, he struck out Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez. <laughs> It was a good thing that I didn't have a shirt on with buttons that day, because my chest was so big, I would have killed the people on the right field stands. <laughs> thank you very much for Mercy College, and thank you, for people, everyone, for this honor. Uh, Brian sent us some remarks via video. Hello, everybody. Sorry I can't be there. I'm in spring training getting ready for the baseball season to start, um, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak in front of you. 
I think it's important to recognize uh, somebody from our Mercy College family, Neil Judge, um, who has just passed. He impacted a lot of people. He impacted the athletic program. We'll miss him, but his legacy is going to live on for a long time. You know, I grew up at Mercy College. My mom worked there, and I was able to meet a lot of really cool people that have impacted my life. I think about Mr. Judge, again, you know, what he did for the athletic program. And he also, another thing is he taught me how to lose. He would kick my ass in ping pong all the time in the gym. And it was a, it was a very humbling experience for me. I think about Irene Buckley and how she always encouraged me to come back to school and finish my degree. I think about Bill Sullivan, my coach for four years, a mentor of mine, and I really value his friendship. Uh, last but not least, I think about my teammates. You know, we won and we lost together. And I think the key point here is that we did it together. You know, they taught me how important it is to have a really solid team culture. You know, we still have a, a group chat, about four, uh, 14 of us, where we, we root for each other. And now as we're getting older, we're starting to root for our kids, too. It's kind of a, a really cool thing that we have going. You know, when I was received this award, uh, I thought it was important to think about what I wanted to say. You know, Mercy College has instilled a lot of the characteristics that I value as a leader. And I thought it would be important for me to go over a few of them. I want to be a reliable leader. I want to empower and serve the people around me. I want to build trust with authenticity, honesty, and consistency. It's really important to be prepared. Preparation is key, and we're going to go through it together. I'm going to have boots on the ground with people. I want to be ambitious, determined, and resilient. Ambitious by having a growth mindset, always learning and looking for a competitive edge. Determined, I'm going to be fiercely loyal to the efforts of the people around me and determined. You know, when I think about being resilient, at Mercy College, I learned how to take a punch. I learned how to get up from a punch. And I learned how to avoid the punch. Learning, growing, and adapting. You know, there's power in team and there's power in culture. I think it's important to be deliberate about your culture. I think you should collaborate. Everybody and everybody and everyone matters. We're going to devote to a common purpose because that gives you, provides clarity. And when, when that's all said and done, I think it's important to embrace the process. What it comes down to is I want to help people be better than they've ever been, better than they ever dreamed. And that's what my job is as a coach. And I learned a lot of that at Mercy College. I think it's really important to recognize the success the athletic program has had. I'm really proud to be you know, a baseball alum there, and I'm really excited for the growth and the success of the program. Thank you again for this award, and I look forward to the school succeeding in the future. I know we just stopped clapping, but could we give our awardees another round of applause? Now, I know you probably already stood up, but we want to thank our colleagues, the Mercy staff, for putting on this beautiful award ceremony tonight. So you know who you are. You got to stand again. Yeah, we're clapping for you guys. Clapping for the staff. Let's go, staff. Good job. I, I see you all, but you're not standing. Sorry. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. That wraps everything up. And dinner, I'm going to say dinner's being served. That's, kind of, that's on here. Dinner's served. <laughs> but um, awardees, would you please come to the podium and have your picture taken with President Hall. Everybody else, you can eat. That's right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Go get some food. Go get some dinner. <laughs>